Norwegian diplomat Mona Jewell, who's currently in South Africa to meet uh, different stakeholders, says the country is an important player on the world stage. She believes it can contribute towards uh, brokering peace between Russia and Ukraine and also between Palestine and Israel. Speaking to SABC International News editor Sophie Mokwena, Jewell says the paralysis in the UN Security Council has led to the organ's failure to stop the wars in Ukraine and Gaza. Been at the United Nations the thorny issue of Israel and Palestine is always on the agenda of the Security Council and the General Assembly. Here we are in a situation where the conflict in the Middle East has escalated. You are familiar with the Oslo Accord. Uh, Norway played a very important role to ensure that uh, that agreement was signed in 1993. If you were to remind us what was the Oslo Accord all about, what did the agreement entail? Thank you very much for having me. Um, the Oslo Accord from uh, 1993 that was signed outside the, the White House lawn uh, is, was about an agreement a gradual agreement that should lead to the establishment of a Palestinian state and it led to the mutual recognition between Israel and the PLO at the time. The reason why I'm underlining the graduality is that it started with self-governing of, of the Palestinian in certain parts of the occupied territory, meaning Gaza and parts of the West Bank. The plan was that this should be gradually uh, expanded to a Palestinian state and that the Palestinian Authority should be gradually built up to take over that state. What happened, as we all know, is that that started to Fault, faltering uh, after a few uh, years because in my view neither Israel nor the Palestinians at the time really stuck to their commitments according to, to the agreement. I think one of the things that, that happened and, and the reason why it, it didn't, didn't uh, go the way that was planned was that uh, in, in Israel, uh, as you probably remember, uh, Prime Minister Rabin was shot. And, and he, among his own, because he went into uh, uh, the agreement uh, uh, with the Palestinians, that meant that on the Israeli side, one didn't have that kind of a strong person, a strong commitment uh, on the Israeli side. Uh, on the Palestinian side, uh, even if it, they took upon themselves to renounce violence, there was gradually more uh, violent action and terrorism uh, taking place. So the confidence that, that we thought would be built by gradually working together started uh, to, 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 um, to fall. Now, when we look at what's currently happening and looking back at that accord, can the accord still be resuscitated? I certainly think so, but uh, I think what we have learned from the Oslo uh, process is that one need to tackle all the issues at once. We need to find a way to establish a Palestinian state that is being recognized not only by Israel but by the whole international uh, community. And with that means that we have to find a way to deal with the borders of that state, to deal with the issue of the refugees, to deal with the issues of Jerusalem. And there are, there have been so many attempts throughout, after uh, the Oslo Agreement, to try to find 
away. So there are many drafts of an agreement in in documents in in the in in uh, in, in many places. I mean, there is a way, but it needs a political will on both sides, and it it needs to be two parties that really are both able and willing to enter into such an agreement. And right now, we are certainly are not there. But there is no other alternative to the two-state solution. When you look at the leadership that you have right now, both in Palestine and in Israel, do you think the leaders of both nations can be trusted to really listen to the international community, to look at this issue honestly and objectively. I think that is, 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 is a real challenge right now because I think there has been a long history now with the leaders on both sides not trusting each other and with the situation as it is now on the Israeli side you have a very very difficult uh, uh, domestic political scene uh, with uh, with a lot of also opposition to the to the now uh, 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 prime minister there is a talk that there will have to be new election in in, in Israel uh, again on the Palestinian side you know we have the division between Gaza and the West Bank and with Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. So I think on both sides there are challenges that will make it difficult f for in the current situation for the leaders to, 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 to get uh, um, to the table. People are dying in Gaza. Now, how can the international community help to ensure that the current conflict stops? I think the big mistake, in my view, what we all could be blamed of, is that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been put aside for too long. We haven't been focused on finding a solution to this conflict. Right now, our first priority will have to be to, uh, to, to stop the war. We desperately need an immediate ceasefire. We need to assure access for humanitarian assistance massively. We cannot any longer tolerate the suffering on the on 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 the on the on the Palestinian uh, side as a consequence of the war. So we need to do to do that, and then we need to get the parties to put the pressure on both sides to get back to the table and to find a solution. Uh, and I think uh, the whole international community with, uh, with, with, the, with the US, all of us now have to make sure that this will not happen again and that there will be a solution found to the conflict. On many occasions, we saw the Security Council dealing with this issue of ceasefire and humanitarian corridor and aid having to be delivered in Gaza. But the P5 members, they always either veto the resolution or having their own interest before thinking about what's happening in Palestine. How do you ensure that the P5 members in the Security Council do agree and put aside their differences as powerful nations? Yes, we are in a very unfortunate situation, both when it comes to the to, to, to the Russian aggression vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and know what's going on in, in Palestine, that there is disagreement and that the use of veto among the P5s has made the Security Council unable to take action in both, uh, in, 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 in both uh, uh, conflicts and wars. Uh, we had just recently one finally uh, Security Council resolution uh, where, the, where the US did not veto but abstained. But 
I have to admit that we haven't seen much follow-up uh, or consequences of that resolution uh, on, on the war still going on in, in, in Gaza. So it is, we are in a very challenging situation that needs to be addressed still by all of us. And as a member, as an, an elected member for, for, for two years in the Security Council, we worked very hard. This was before the latest war, but we worked very hard also among the elected member of the Security Council because we are 10 elected members without veto. But as at, if, if the elected member works together, we are quite powerful and you have to uh, i think we have to make a notice of the fact that the last resolution that was that was uh, that went through was uh, and came from the elected member of the security council so there are ways to we have to continue to put pressure on 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 the p5s as well not to use veto in such dramatic situation as we have both in Ukraine and in Gaza. But America says that resolution is not binding. Immediately thereafter, mm. America decided to say the resolution is not binding, yeah. which gave Israel power to continue mm. and defy yeah. the Security Council. It's certainly not the Norwegian position that Security Council are not binding. They certainly are in, in, in our view. So uh, I think that was, um, was quite un un unfortunate because it's very important that because unlike the, the resolutions from the General Assembly that are very important because it covers all members of the UN, but uh, different from, uh, from, from General Assembly resolution, uh, Security Council resolutions are binding. Now looking at South Africa, what can be South Africa's role with the experience of apartheid in terms of assisting to ensure that there's peace in the Middle East? We saw South Africa going to the International Court of Justice. I think South Africa has a very, very important role to play. I mean, you have a long tradition with being active on, on facilitation and mediation among the Israelis and the Palestinians. Uh, I have m met South African in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in working on, 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 on that conflict throughout the years since, since the Oslo Agreement. And I, I think that is a very important role for, for, for South Africa to play. Um, uh, the South Africans have decided to take uh, to take the, uh, uh, the, the 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 Israelis the way they conduct the war to to, to ICJ. We, we we think and 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 support the use of the international uh, um, legal system in in conflicts like that. We have we have no uh, no plan to intervene at this stage, but we are certainly following very closely uh, the, uh, the 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 court deliberation uh, on this issue and we have uh, as Norway strongly uh, criticized Israel for for, for the way uh, they conduct uh, the war um, but I also think that it is very important for 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 countries like us from South Africa like uh, Norway like other countries that we need to talk to both sides I mean we need to put pressure on both sides and we need to find a way for them to meet at the table. Now there are talks behind the scenes with Qatar, Egypt, the US trying to push for ceasefire. It looks like it's not going to happen because on the other hand Israel is saying Hamas must release all the hostages. That's exactly what America is also saying. How do you ensure that pressure is not only on Israel but on Hamas to ensure that there's movement so that we can find a lasting solution to this protracted uh, recent conflict. I mean we are desperately and the people of Gaza is 
desperately in need of a ceasefire because this cannot go on any uh, any longer and we like i think many other countries are and i think uh, south africa are, we are talking to all sides including hamas because you're very correct the pressure needs to be on both sides, because there cannot be uh, any, 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 any ceasefire that could hold, will have to be agreed by, uh, by, by both of them. And hostage taking is, 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 is illegal as well. And we have to make sure that we also give that message to, to Hamas that, that hostages should be released and Israel should, should stop the, uh, the, the fighting. Palestine has gone to the United Nations Security Council asking for recognition. Mm -hmm. The Oslo Accord spoke to Palestine being recognized mm -hmm. as a state mm -hmm. and having powers mm -hmm. to run its territory. Do you think this issue will see the light of the day. I can understand fairly well why the Palestinians or the Palestinian Authority now wants to go to the, to the UN and, and ask for, uh, uh, for, uh, for recognition uh, of, of, of their states. At the other hand, uh, our position is that of course, I mean, when the time comes, we will certainly uh, recognize a Palestinian state, but we don't think that a recognition as such at this stage will change much on, on the ground. And now we think that we should, we should concentrate on finding a way for them to get back to the table and to find a solution that will lead to the establishment of a Palestinian state. On the other hand, when you look at Israel, President, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is firm, and it looks like he has taken a hard line. Is it possible to negotiate peace between Palestine and Israel under Benjamin Netanyahu? I mean, I think we should listen to, to what uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu I, I, is saying, and and uh, and so far he has sort of rejecting the rejected the, the concept of, of of a Palestinian state, and he has said that publicly even even recently, and uh, and and of course that makes it very difficult <laughs> and challenging to see that 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 then can be realized uh, while we, with him as, uh, as Prime Minister. But we, we, I, th I think we have to, uh, to not to sort of to, 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 to give up on, 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 on the pressure both on, 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 on the now government in Israel uh, and, and also on the Palestinian side that it's their obligation to, 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 to find a way with the help of all of us. And you know that there, there, there might be changes both on the Israeli side and on the, on the Palestinian side, we have seen a, 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 a new government also on the on the Palestinian side. So uh, I, I think we, we have to just continue to, uh, to 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 work for what a, 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 a there is you know in the international community there is hardly anybody who disagree that the, the, the two-state solution is the solution. The, the Russians and, 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 and the United States in the Security Council, we all, they, even they, <laughs> agree on, 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 on that outcome. But it's how to get there that is the problem. A very difficult time for Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, daily making those requests and plea, pleading with all sides. Why is the UN in such a mess, particularly the Security Council? What has paralyzed this important world body and the organ, the Security Council, that was established after the Second World War to maintain peace? Mm. I think one one of of the reason why we now 
see this, like you call a, a, a mess, uh, is of course that in the the conflicts at hand now with the with 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 the uh, the, the Russian aggression against Ukraine and the war in Gaza, the 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 in both wars, I mean the permanent members of, of the Security Council are themselves involved one way or another. In, in Ukraine, of course, Russia <laughs> very directly, uh, the, the, the US on the other hand as, as a support to, uh, uh, to Israel. And as long as we have uh, the veto power in place, as long as we have a composition of the Security Council, being dating back to the uh, to the original <laughs> uh, uh, charter of of, of 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 the UN, I think uh, it is now time for also a reform of the Security Council, where you have a better representative uh, in 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 the Council, and not least from. Africa. Uh, I don't think that will sort of uh, change the system overnight, but it will at least it will make it will give more voices a more fair representation of the world in in, in the Security Council, and that that I think will help uh, also increase the legitimacy of, of, of the Security Council. I didn't ask you a question. The purpose of your visit in South Africa, maybe it will also share some light in terms of where Norway is on issues. Yeah. No, we are, uh, we are uh, as, as Norway is reaching out, uh, as always, we have a long tradition for having a close relationship with, uh, with, with African countries. And I will say in particular with uh, uh, with, with South Africa, also from the time of, uh, of apartheid, being a very, very strong uh, anti-apartment uh, uh, and supporter and relation with the, with the ANC. And we see now that, that South Africa is a very, very important player also on the uh, on the international scene uh, and with the tensions that are now growing and the polaris the geopolitical polarization due to the war in Ukraine and now with what's going on in the Middle East I think we need to partner up with with countries like uh, like South Africa and see what what can countries like us do to try to be helpful in this very very difficult time we are living in